Let's continue. We have 1 Peter 3 and 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward the Most High by the resurrection of Mashiach Yahushua, who was gone into heaven and is on the right hand of the Most High, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So you see, it says not putting away of the filth of the flesh, being, being dipped in water, but he has a good conscience toward the Most High. A good conscience toward the Most High and being righteous and doing his commandments. That's why Ephesians 5 and 26. This is how you got to be baptized. You see, they'll put you in the water, you go, you go in the water, a dry devil, you come up a wet devil, because you don't know the word of the Most High. If you don't know the word of the Most High, what are you accomplishing to receive the blessings of the Most High? Ephesians 5.26. I'm not, I'm not condemning water baptism because the Mashiach Abishai was baptized in the water. But by the time he was 30 years old, he had been to a whole curriculum of learning this word. He was 30 years old when he got baptized. And it was from birth, remember he had the Holy Spirit in, the, in Mary's womb, all the way to 30 years old. 30 years, yeah, damn, he was baptized, the Spirit came upon him. Listen, Ephesians 5, 26, this was important that he might sanctify and cleanse it, clean us up out with the washing of water by the word. My shepherd said, told us in John 15 and 3, now you are clean through the word. That I've spoken unto you. St. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. You see what I'm saying? And the word comes along with what? The law. Right, Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and that law is the truth. See? So where do you find the law? In his words. He's telling us. We're learning the laws as we go through this whole Bible. The New Testament gives us an understanding of how we should be. In following the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments. That's what it's all about, people. No more, no less. It's not about having faith in Him, believing in Him. The only way you believe in him is you do what he say do. And you don't just honor him with your lips and your mind is far from him. You're going to show up by your actions, by your works. Look at Romans 1 and 7. Book of Romans, look what Paul is saying. To all that be in Rome, be loved of the Most High. Called to be saints. Now the book of Romans is talking to the Israelites. Because be loved of the Most High, look at Romans 9.13, as it is written. Jacob have I loved. You're going to see what the Most High say. He loved any other nation besides the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, Jacob have I loved. To all that be in Rome, be loved of the Most High, called to be saints. Psalms 148, 14. Defines the saints who are the children of Israel. Grace to you and peace from the Most High, our Father. You can't get no clearer than that. Most High say he the power of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus 3, 15 and 16. Matthew 22, 32. Acts 3, 13. Just for three. In the old, the Gospels and the New Testament. I mean, it's right there. Once again, Exodus 3, 15 and 16. Be the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
My second side told us that. Matthew 22, 32. Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Acts 3, 13. Paul, our fathers. Paul who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The power of our fathers. So here it is. When you see this, our father, that's who he is. And our power, the Masiach Yahushai. He said in Matthew 15, 24, but he has been said, I am not sent, but that's only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was talking to a Greek woman, the so-called Caucasian woman, when he told her that. So, we have to continually work toward pleasing the Most High. Nahum 1, and three. Nahum one and three. In order way you please the most high, do what he say do. I mean, who, what parent is, is is really overwhelmed with their children when they do opposite of what they would have them to do? Does it make sense if we the most high's children? The children of Israel. They have one and three. The Most High is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. You sin against the Most High, say, he will not at all acquit the wicked. The Most High has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. See? And he go on to talk about the Most High, the Most High, the Most High things that he does. See? And that's what we gotta remember. Verse 2, the most high is jealous. And the most high revenges. You that the most high is jealous. And the most high revenges. The most high revenges and is furious. The most high will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Now some of you might say, oh that's just for the other nations. No. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Because when you, you fall into this category in James 4 and 4, look, James 4 and 4, the adulterers and adulteresses know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High. You at war with him. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. You hear that? Israel, you hear that? Don't get it twisted. In your wildest dreams, don't think, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. Most High, you don't fit into this category. There's a lot of you trying to look at the other nations. Most I say, you'll start with us first. Nahum 1 and 2. Most High is jealous. Matter of fact, Most High, I say it all the time, his aim is jealous. You understand that? Say, he is jealous. You know what jealous means? Something you just, you got an attitude about somebody being something that you don't like. Mess with something that's yours, like your woman, your man. Exodus 34 and 14. But thou shalt worship no other God, no other idol, nothing else, no other entity. For the Most High, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous power. See? That's what I'm saying. You know, when you look at the Most High said Job was perfect. The shoe evil. All of that. Right? But he still what? Didn't have the right understanding of how all that he had and trying to follow the law. To the letter. Without the faith in the most high. 
And only because of the Most High is wise, he's able to have everything that he has with his blessings for us two people. This is all an example for us to look at and to pay attention to. Back to Job 32 and 2. Job 32 and 2. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barachal, the Buzite, or the kindred of Ram, against Job was his wrath kindled. Why? Because he justified himself. You find people that all they do is talk about, they brag about themselves. Rather than the most high. See? He justified himself rather than the most high. That's why we got to look at this and learn right from wrong. What's right and what's wrong? No more, no less. Go to Colossians, third chapter. Colossians three. Colossians three and five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. See? All these things are contrary to honoring and praising the most high. For which things sake the wrath of the Most High cometh on the children of disobedience. See? The wrath of the Most High is coming upon two thirds of our people and the wicked of the world. For what? Disobedience for what? Disobeying what? The laws of the Most High. In the which ye also walk sometime when ye live in them. See? But now ye are. You also put off all these, put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. You know, malice is angry without a cause. You ain't got no really, really reason to be angry, but you're just angry because you're wicked and evil. Blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, saying that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. See? If you are made in the image of the Most High, the Most High ain't sitting around lying. I mean, what are you going to lie for? You ain't got to lie to tell the truth. The way you hear him, so I'm going to tell your butt up. He's going to wrath for you. <laughs> That's all you need to hear. Or you do what I say, do I'm gonna bless you. Period. See? So we have instruction. We just gotta follow. Look at uh, verse 6 again. Colossians 3 and 6. For which things sake the wrath of the most high come upon the children of disobedience. See? You disobedient? The wrath of the most high will come upon you. Then you're going to wonder, why are you being dealt with as such? Why am I being dealt with like this? It's going to be because of something that we did. Something we did. Most high jacking us. You got to turn. You got to turn from, from the sinner. You know, if you know how to conduct yourself and you don't, then you're supposed to be beat with many stripes because your righteousness is like, we like filthy rags anyway. And here you are bringing forth the judgment upon yourself because if you're going to be obedient, then you're going to do what you said do. You're going to be obedient. But you got to know how to be obedient. 
But if you don't know how to be obedient, then how is it? What you what, what you what is your guideline? What is your guideline upon? What do you base your guideline on? How you feel? So you the Most High, right? Without knowing what He say, just how you feel. Somebody supposed to be feeling something how you feel because you feel a certain way, and it's contrary to the way the Most High say you're supposed to feel and act, think, speak, and act. No, it don't work that way. And that's where a lot of times, you know, it'd be a lot of problem in Israel because you have people that want you to think and feel the way they feel and they're not in the truth. They don't know the truth. And some of you that's in the truth still don't know how to be spiritually enough to understand any about your feelings. Your feelings, my feelings, nobody's feelings. It's about what's right according to thus say the most high. Because a lot of people are going to go to hell with, you're going to put a whole lot of people in hell with yourself and them follow behind you and not knowing. Or you that do know and then leave somebody wrong. You better know what you better know. For real, for real. This ain't no joke, y'all. Like my second shot said over and over again, gonna be weeping and gnashing the teeth. But he gave us a curriculum to go by. And it's all here, people. All we gotta do is just Get off, get off the high horse, thinking you all that, and you ain't nothing as you ought to be. And you can find people that that think they all that, so you think you all that, you're creating a certain spirit within people. You know who, who you who you are, the shoe fit where. You gotta humble yourself before the most high humble you. Bring you down. None of us. Are exempt from being touched by the most high. That's how I went through the whole book of Job. And showing you. Because it started off in chapter one, everybody thinking, oh, he's perfect. Upright. And shoot evil. But then the most high showed you. Through his word. And he was an example for us today. And who's telling them? Then the most I came back and dealt with him. I said, what was you at when I made created the world? What was you at? You know, measure this like he did Ezra. Hey man, measure the weight of a flame. <laughs> measure the wind and so forth. You know what I mean? The most I you know he got a sense of humor too. But it's all serious. When we look at it, it's like it's real. It's real, it's real. And he's real. That's why he asks you questions like that. Let you know who you think you are. So does you love my people more than me? <laughs> I don't think so. And no matter what we went through and going through, he said we're gonna go through it. He's not a man, he's alive. You do what I say, I'm gonna bless you. You don't do what I say, I'm gonna bring these curses upon you. And that's what we did. We chose the latter. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Hear the word of the Most High. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Most High while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. I'm going to read this here one more time. Seek ye the Most High while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Read it one more time for understanding. Seek ye the Most High while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You gotta seek him while he can be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. See? And let him return unto the Most High. He will have mercy upon him. Mercy is not getting something you do deserve for being wicked. You hear that? Turn from your wicked ways. Come back to the Most High. How do you do that? By coming back to his laws. Moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, ceremonial laws. And I went over the laws. You're on my YouTube page, Freestyle Wampus. I went over the laws. You know, 
because I was went on YouTube looking for someone that was going over the laws. I didn't see anybody going over the laws. And I start going over on the laws, then most high, all praise the most high, then I start seeing others start going over these laws. You know, so it's all beautiful. How we do, how we I pick up something from this this person and that person, whatever, we know a part of our sign part. The spirit had me just start going over the laws, and I'm, we gonna still review the laws. We can't go over them enough. You see, till it's embedded in us. He said, gonna put it in our minds. You gonna know these laws? Cause maybe it's not in your mind. Maybe it's not all the way there. So we gotta go over them and review them and review them. So it's just, he said, the last days he gonna put it in our minds. And how you gonna put it in our minds? We gonna know them. You gonna know what's right from wrong. And if you don't, nobody asks any questions. So I figure you all should know. Will be held accountable. Just let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Most High and he will have mercy upon him and to our power for he will, he will abundantly pardon him. Yeah? That's why it's important. Deuteronomy 28 and 1 is very, very important. See, well, he will abundantly pardon You hear that? Gonna forgive our sins, people, for the things that we have done wrong, abundantly. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, it's the future, people, that thou shalt hearken, mean listen dizzily unto the voice of the Most High thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Most High thy power, your power, Israel, will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. This is what's happening right now. We're coming back to His laws, the Israelites, we as Israelites, all of us, and He's going to set us above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if, that's a condition, thou shalt hearken, meaning to listen. Unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, and do his laws. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. And the field is the world. So, we're going to be blessed in every city and all over the world, above all nations. That's what's promised to Israel. One third, I might say, because two thirds of our people are going to be put to death. But, at the same time, he told us in Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But, this condition, it shall come to pass in the future, if thou wilt not hearken, meaning listen, unto the voice of the Most High, your power, which is thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, his laws and statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If we don't follow his laws, all these curses will come upon us and overtake us. Cursed shall I be in the city, and cursed shall I be in the field. Let me get that field for you, friends. I said the field is the world. And see, that's a lot of the problem that we have in not really understanding or having the understanding of these scriptures through the precepts. Uh, Matthew 13th chapter and the 38th verse. The field is the world, see? He's given an understanding of the tares in this chapter of what we're reading right there, but he's telling you the field is the world. That's why I say, curse that I'll be in the city, curse that I'll be in the field. I mean the world, where we are in the world, four corners of the earth. If we didn't follow the most high's commandments, that's what happened to us. And we're still in that condition to this day. Mm. That's why we have to keep the commandments of the most high. As you go to the last books of the Bible and the faith, they both work together. Matthew 14 and 12. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew, I said, Matthew is. Revelations 14 and 12, so like 
Here is the patience of the saints. What are the twelve tribes of Israel? Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of the Messiah. Keeping the commandments and having faith. And the Messiah. They work together. They go together. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. They may enter in through the gates into the city. trying to use, you know, faith in Jesus and faith in Christ and so forth, like you don't have to keep the laws of the most high. And they're trying to use Paul's writing, but what did Paul say here? Romans 3.31 Do we make, excuse me, do we then make void the law through faith? Both sides forbid. Yeah. We establish the law. We establish the law. So, how do you break that down? To mean that we don't have to deal with the law no more, but we have to be faithful in the Messiah that was shot. And he died for the Gentiles. He died. His blood was shed for Israel. Acts 5, 30 and 31, all day long. It ain't going nowhere. It's still going to be there. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Should we continue in sin, breaking the laws of the Most High? That grace is getting something you don't deserve? Shall abound? Most High forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You're supposed to be dead to sin. How are you going to continue to live in sin? That's what he's saying. The trans transgressing the Most High's laws. Jump down to verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion. Breaking the laws of the Most High shall have not dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. See? But what law? The law of sacrifice. Sacrifice the animal. Remember he said the bulls and, and, and goats and rams didn't take away sins, didn't make a man perfect. That's the law of sacrifice. Listen. What then? Shall we sin? Shall we break the Most High's law? Because we are not under the Law, but under grace, both sides forbid. So what is he saying? What is he saying? Shall we sin? Shall we break the most high's laws? Most high forbid that you break the most high's laws because you are under grace, getting something you don't deserve. Hmm. He said no. Don't get it twisted. All is clear. Remember, he was a Pharisee. He was raised a Pharisee. What were they about? Grace and mercy. Faith in the Mashiach of I don't think so. He was about the law. The law, the law, the law. <laughs> he was about the law. Anyway, was about the law. Paul was about the law. He was raised in the law. Period. He was, he was raised to be a Pharisee. And you see who was coming against the Mashiach of Even him. But his name was Saul. Wake up, people. He was put in the death to have faith in the Mashiach was shot. When his name was Saul. That's why he had to suffer for Baha Shama Mashiach was shot in the name of the Lord and Savior. Look at Tobit, the seventh chapter. And I'm going to say that for a moment. I don't want to count. 
give me a Baruch 4 and 1. Baruch 4 and 1. And these are 12 books that the Protestant church took out of the Bible. The original King James 611 Bible in the late 1800s. You see? Knowing we come into our senses free, so called free. And establishing so many wonderful things in the world, inventions and so forth. They took it out. But it's in a Catholic Bible. But we're four and one. But all these different religions outside of the Catholic Church, they don't have them in their Bible. All these new age Bibles that they created. Even in the King James 611 Bible, they took it out of here. That's why I called the revised version. But the original King James 611 Bible, the authorized King James 611 Bible, have the apartment for it. These 14 books in it. So now, uh, Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep the law will come to everlasting life. It's the same thing over and over again. But such as leave it, as these preachers are teaching you, that you're not in the law, shall die. Look, go to Matthew 5 and 19. So how are they trying to allow you to come to everlasting life? We say all that leave the law, and they tell you that under the law, shall die. So, Matthew 5, 19 says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, which is his laws, and shall teach men so, as these preachers are doing, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. When you cast a lick of fire, people. But whosoever shall do and teach them, this is Mashiach Yahushua's words, the words that are most high. He is the word that are most high. Listen. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now either you're going to be the least or you're going to be the greatest. You're going to be the greatest or you're going to be the least. So if you don't want to do what's right now as the most high, you're going to die. I'll read to you again. There's many places it's written throughout the scriptures, throughout the Bible. It says, Luke 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep it shall come to everlasting life. But such as leave it shall die. And that die, that death is that lake of fire. Second Ezra 8. Let's look at verse 28. Second Ezra 8. Second Ezra 8 and 28. It says, Think not upon those that have walked fiendly before thee. And remember them which according to thy will have known thy fear. Let it not be thy will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, but to look upon them that have clearly taught thy law. I read you again. Let it not be thy will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, but to look upon them that have clearly taught thy law. Take thou no indignation at them which are deemed worse than beasts, but love them that always 
put their trust in thy righteousness and glory. We win. Christ is on the most high to keep his laws. All glory to the most high. Very important. Look at uh, second measure is nine and verse thirty-one. Second measure is nine and thirty-one. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored. In it forever. Yeah. For behold, I sow my law in you. And it says, my law in you. So I said, you ain't following his laws. You ain't dealing with him. He don't know you. And it shall bring fruit in you. And ye shall be honored in it forever. But our fathers who received the law kept it not, and observed not thy ordinances. And though the fruit of the law did not perish, neither could it. But it was yine, it was yours. What it said? The fruit of the law did not perish because it's the most high's laws. Yet they that received it perished because they kept not the thing that was sown in them. See? They didn't keep the law. So they perished. And we bore their iniquity. Of our forefathers. That's when those that are living today think that they don't have to pay for what their forefathers have done. Oh, everybody got to pay. Most I deal with nations. We as the children of Israel, we bore the iniquity of the wicked, even the wicked of our people, we had to deal with. And the heathen know it. Look, go to Ezekiel 39 and 23. Just because you don't know it, don't mean that it ain't written. The most high word is not a lie. Listen to what he said. Ezekiel 39, 23 he said, And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity. Why? For their sins. For their iniquity. The heathen know that we went into captivity for our sins. So they set up all these religions. They got everybody saying, you ain't got to follow the most high. You ain't under the law. These other nations outside of the church, Israel Israel knew we were in the captivity for our sins. For breaking the laws of the most high. So you, what you think? They're going to tell you to come back to the laws that's come out to the most high? I don't think so. Where that's at? Where is that happening now? You see the Japanese, the Chinese, the Arabs, the so-called white man, and the Africans, who, who is it that's saying, come back to the laws of the Most High? Have faith in the Most High God shot, teaching you that you're Israelite. What did I say? You would say, and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. What do you think? They're going to they gonna allow you to come back to the laws? That's, come back to, that's why it's such a problem with those that are keeping the commandments of the Most High. I had a true testament of the Most High. I had a faith in the Most High. I said, go to the Most High on our behalf. They know. It's, he's telling you that the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies and so fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions, breaking the most high of laws, have I done unto them and hid my face from them. <laughs> See, 
give you a good example in, in the book of Judah, fifth chapter. Over there, Judah 5. Those people know. That. Judah 5. Let's look at verse 17. If you have a Cambridge University Press, it's on verse page 46. Verse 17. Listen. And whilst they sin not before their power, the Most High Yahweh, they prospered. They were the heathen now. Because the Most High, that hate of iniquity, hate of sin, hate of wickedness, was with them. But this condition, when they departed from the way which he appointed them, which is to keep his laws, his commandments, his covenant, with the twelve tribes of Israel, but when they departed from the way which he command, appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. See, we lost. We went down. This is what the heathens know. Verse 19, but now are they returned to their power. I don't want everybody to hear this. Because now we as the Israelites coming back to the Most High's laws. You don't find the Israelite that's not talking about we're not under the law like the Christian churches do and so forth. We don't have to follow the laws. Now are they returned to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Uh, therefore, my master and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their power, like you're doing when you're in these churches, with these poor chop eating preachers telling you, you ain't got to follow the most highest laws, touch commandments. That's why you're going to be part of the two thirds, you're going to repent. Come out to his laws, that's commandments, his rules and regulations. Listen. Now, therefore, verse 20, my master and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Now, you make it say something different. Mashiach O'Shaar told us to bring one of the least commandments you teach men so you're going to be the least in the kingdom of heaven. Hear what it said? Verse 20 of Judas the fifth chapter. Now therefore my past master and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. See? That's why we can't rise up, because our people are in sin. But see, it's getting near the end, and you see the most I have a spirit on the Hebrew Israelites that we're keeping these laws. We found these laws. All of us. To the best of our ability. Or praise the Most High that He's bringing it back to us. He said He's going to do it. His word is true. Verse 21. But it's a condition. If there be no iniquity in their nation, let my master now pass by, leave them alone. Let their power defend them. And their power, the Most High Yahweh, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shine, the Holy Angels, be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. Become a disgrace before all the world. They know this. So, you think, okay, well, we didn't do it. We didn't do nothing. Look, just to clear that spirit up, that mindset up, go to Ezekiel 21 and 1. 
Ezekiel 21 and 1. The word of the Most High came unto me, saying, the Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel, and say to the land of Israel, Now we was on the land, the Israelite, that's our land. Thus said the Most High, Behold, I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of the sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. You hear that? These are chosen people of the Most High, who we are, brothers and sisters. He said, going to cut off from the land of Israel the righteous and the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sheep, my sword, go forth out of his sheep against all flesh from the south to the north, that all flesh may know that I, the Most High, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheep. It shall not return anymore. See? He took the righteous and the wicked of the Israelites in the captivity, slavery, and bondage of what the wicked done. So we bring forth these hardcore scriptures against the wicked of our people and the wicked of this world today. Hey, you got to take it over to the Most High as it is written. You gotta understand, Israelites, Revelation 12 and 12, and Revelation 12 and 17, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe and destruction to the habitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. It's getting that time. Side short time. We know he got a short time. You see? Verse 17. And the dragon, which is the devil, which is Satan, which is Esau, which is the beast, which is the serpent, was wrought with the woman, who was Israel, and went to make war with the remnant, that's the one third, y'all, of the of her seed. One third of the twelve tribes of Israel, which keep the commandments of the Most High. And had a testimony of my Seah Kelvin Shah. See, that's the same thing we read in Revelation 14 and 12, remember? Here's the patience which deal with time. Other saints, what are who? The 12 tribes of Israel. The remnant of her seed. Here's the patience and the of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of my Seah Kelvin Shah. Going to the Most High and all we have. That's what it's all about. You can't go no other way besides the right way. Or be part of the wicked. No more, no less people. That's why we gotta come back to him. We come back to him, he will deserve us one way or another. And you see the things that's 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 going down and how it's going down. According to as it is written, we rejoice because the word of the Most High is true. We give all glory and power and praise to His holy name. Shalom, 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 Shalom